What's up guys, Axis here and I'm back with a new tutorial, alright? Today we're going to be showing you how to create an exhaust material. You know those cool exhausts with the, uh, with the gradients on them. Uh, we're going to be making one of those. And I'm going to be showing you how to use film width as well. I'm going to be using that on the ground texture. I'm not going to be showing you how to model the exhaust however, because that's not my place. But what is my place is to tell you that Landscape Essentials is 45% off and there's only two days left? Yeah, there's only two days left of the sale, so you gotta go and grab it now. You don't wanna have that regret. Check out all these renders on the screen, including the one that we're gonna be creating today. I'm including the VDB free of charge in the description below. And you can go and download. We're gonna be showing you how to shade that as well with volume medium. So without further ado, let's get into this. I'm going to send this to the render viewer, the, the live viewer, sorry. And um, in fact, let's just start making the materials. So I'm going to go and create just a standard, a standard octane material. I'm going to put that onto our exhaust. And in here, we're going to go and, yeah, it's a glossy material we need. And then make sure that it's one. So we have a fully glossy material here and I'm going to open up the node editor view and in here I'm going to add in a gradient I tried doing film with but it didn't work because I couldn't get it to project correctly but this way it works fine you just have to create your own gradient which kind of sucks because uh, you have to pick your own colors and stuff so in here we're going to go and make a I think it's a linear gradient and just leave this transform. You could even delete this transform, it's not necessary. But the main part of this is we're going to be creating our gradient here. So we go into our gradient, twirl this down so we get some more settings. We're going to make the first node white, second node kind of yellowy color. Just look at some references and, and color pick. And move this one over here. And we're going to go with more of a pinky, pinky color now. Maybe more of an orange yellow here. Then we're going to go with our dark blue. And then finally, control and drag, and we can get our white over here. So that should be it. And make sure you plug this into both the diffuse and the specular. And now I'm going to be adding a little bit of a roughness into this. Just to spice the material up a bit, give it a bit of detail that it didn't have before. Grab a noise and we're going to bump the octaves up to 16. And then we are going to just leave omega on 0.5 and we're going to turn gamma to 4-ish. Should probably just be showing this in the live view of what it's doing, but we're going to be changing the projection and stuff. As you can see, we've got quite a fancy looking material here. It's pretty mad. I'll turn up the brightness just so you can see what's going on. Oh, we've got a new Java version, nice. So we're gonna be changing the projection of this as well. So you're not really gonna be able to see what's uh, going on here until we've actually fixed the projection of this. And I'm also gonna be adding a transform to this. And the settings I used for the transform was 0.5. I think, yeah, it was 0.5. So you just lock the aspect ratio and it should look fine. And I don't think I changed anything else. I think that's about right. I think I did like 4.2 on the gamma. But that is the material essentially. And now all we need to do is change this to a flat projection. I'll actually zoom the camera in a bit more because I've got quite a high res monitor and it'll probably be pretty difficult to see what's going on on the YouTube viewer. So now I'm going to go and select these UV texture thingamajiggy and then we're going to rotate this around 90 degrees whether it's plus 90 or minus 90 I of course get it wrong it's plus 90 and then we're going to scale this down scale it all the way down keep scaling down oh can't do it that way and then just drag this forward Oh, it's still still not looking good. I mean, that is pretty cool, but <laughs> that's not what I'm going for. I'm going to go out the camera in a, uh, just to see what's going on. 
just so I can keep scaling this down quickly. And then I'm going to drag this back. Even then, it's still still too big. So just keep scaling this down. And there we go. So actually, I think this, I was right originally. I think that we did have this rotated the other way because I think the blue was actually on the tip of the exhaust. So move this around. And even then, it's we still need to scale it down. It's pretty ridiculous. So just move this. Good thing we have a little preview here. So we can actually tell what we're doing. But that's looking all right now sort of what I'm going for, but obviously we've got that repetition there. Maybe if we go and mess around with the UV transform of the gradient, we can fix this. If not, we can just put another material on that place there. Which isn't ideal, but... Oh, wrong one. This one. And maybe we move this closer or something and then go back and move our texture you still see it it's kind of annoying um, I guess I'll just put another texture there just duplicate this and then get rid of these two nodes here or this one node going into two channels and make sure it's got flat projection in fact, maybe we could. Maybe if we duplicate it, it will have the same UV, and then we just replace it, and then only select the other part. So if we just select the part that we want, so I'll go into the top view and just select all of this. That's all we want. And then we can go and then do select, set selection, drag our selection into the selection tag. And there we go. But now the, the UVs on this are messed up, so I'm just going to go and change that real quick. Oh, come on. There we go, that's as close as I'm going to get it, I think. I'm going to go back into our camera got a, a response on here but I'll check what it is if you're interested there we go copy my settings if you want and um, I'm actually gonna scale down the bump now I mean the, the roughness we're gonna have to do this over both of them unfortunately so <laughs> probably should have decided to do that before but I never did anyway that's that and now we can get to adding some extra stuff some fun stuff so I'm going to add the crowns texture so just go to shader cinema 4d drag this onto our ground I'm going to go and open up the node editor and I'm also going to go and grab where is it I think it was landscape 9 or 8 yeah it was 8 so I'm going to drag all these in. In fact, I'm not going to drag in this one because we're going to be using just a fully metal material here. I should change that first. We're going to be doing glossy and index on zero. Not looking too good at the moment, but let's get to it. I'm going to put this normal into the normal, surprisingly enough, and the displacement into the displacement. And there's a weird glitch with Octane, or at least with Cinema where I wonder if I can show it off here I'm gonna turn down this first if I show this off on the edges there's a kind of a glitch that happens where it starts tiling again at the end there we go very not very uh, very not nice great English very you know not great so I'm trying to say so we're gonna get a transform and the way I fix this is just plugging in transform to all your displacement nodes, all your landscape nodes and turning it up by a tiny amount like 0 0.02 changing the level of detail to 8k turn this down if you're getting crashes um, I don't seem to get any crashes so and um, I'm going to put this texture on both my grounds drag this down a little bit 
And now we can start messing around with film width, which is a really cool, cool little feature here. I'm also going to be making this diffuse black and turning down the specular just so we have a little less uh, overexposure, I guess, on the camera. And now we can just play around with the film width. I'm going to I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on better. Let's save that real quick just in case the octane gods strike down. And we can play around with this and see what we can get. I want to try and get something kind of similar to the exhaust. It was a kind of purpley, purpley blue that I went for last time. So maybe I'll go for a, more of a pink this time, I don't know. That's like the Joker colours there. And Barbie colour, you know, hot pink. Um, anyway, need to start rambling and choose something. So I'm, I'm going to go with the green, alright? And let's bring in a VDB now. So VDB volume. And now we can bring in our free free uh, VDB. If you've got your own, even better. Oh, This one here, high quality VDB. I'm only going to be including the single frame one, not the full one, because the full one's quite quite a big file. Quite a big uh, amount of space that you'll need. So I decided just to include the high quality one so you can do some stills and whatnot on Instagram or whatever your poison is. Mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. So I'm changing the import unit up as well. Just just a heads up, that's what I'm doing. You can also adjust it inside the coordinates, but I'm not going to be doing that. Well, actually I might. Yeah, I will be doing that, just not at the moment. So I'm also going inside the volume medium, and then we're changing this, the step depth down to 0 0.01. There we go, we can see something going on now. And the density all the way up to 10,000. So, yeah. And inside the absorption, I normally like to just put a float because I think it's way easier. F -f 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 float. And we control this down and you can actually adjust this without even going inside the node, which is nice. So we just copy this into our other channel, save as like one click. And in the scattering, I turned this down quite low, made it like a gray. And the absorption I turned way up. I think I had it at one. And let's just reposition this so we can see what's going on a bit better. I had it rotated the right way first time, I think. Typically. <laughs> and then now I'm going to go and mess around with the, the coordinates. Typically you want to scale this uniformly, so just scale each one to the same value. That's normally where you get the best result. So I'm just going to kind of try and roughly place this inside the exhaust. I don't want to waste too much time because obviously you guys can do this properly. And I'll move the camera down a second just so we can see it a bit clearer. And now for the really fun stuff, what we can do is we can actually go and light this up. When I exported this from Houdini, it actually comes with the kind of the heat map of sorts. You can choose um, a bunch of things to export. You can export density and stuff like that if you've got Houdini. I don't want to go too in depth into that, but I'm just, you know, putting it out there that you can export different ways to emit. And surprisingly, it's quite bright. So let's turn that down. I actually did have it on that value there. And I'm also going to add a orange into here. So go RGB spectrum and I'm going to change this to HSV because I think it's easier to pick a color this way. Oh, not easier if it doesn't work. So and now I'm going to go with a, a brown color. It will look orange. See? See? There we go. It's almost like I've, I've done this before. And yeah, that's looking nice. That's the kind of fiery color we want. And I wonder why this is not looking that dense. Maybe we just mess around with that, and we could also put this down even further. Let's see, let's mess around with the scattering. Scattering is basically the colour that it becomes when the light hits it, so you could even make this a... You can make either of these an RGB spectrum and make it a colour, but in this case I want it to be a, a, a smoke. 
instead of a fire. So, yeah, that's sort of what I had, actually. I think I rotated it a bit as well. And in the final one, you also see that I have the exhaust kind of uh, moving about and stuff. And the way I did that was really simply just a vibrate tag, which you can find in Cinema 4D tags and vibrate. And if the, the anchor point is correct, it should just move when we click on position or whatever. Obviously, you don't really want that. Got the camera animated and everything. So I think I just had it on rotation. But that is pretty much the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. Had quite a fun doing I had quite a fun time doing it. And there's our final result. I also put this on path tracing as well. Sorry. Forgot about that. Path tracing looks really nice on this scene. Try it out, just see what happens. You can also do this in Arnold. Anything that accepts a VDB. And check out Landscape Essentials again, which is 45% off. First link in the description or in the top right. Only two days left. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next tutorial.